communism. Now, what is communism? Uh, we'll try to talk about it as if it's an economic um, system, just like, you know, capitalism or something like that. Um, although capitalism is more than an economic system, it's an idea of freedom. Um, but communism is a economic system as much as Taliban or Al Qaeda, Islam is an economic system. Let me give you a few examples. The vast majority of the Communist Manifesto has zero to do with economics. And I'll just give you some snippets here. <clears throat> Communist Manifesto is divided up in three parts, right? the <clears throat> bourgeoisie and the proletariat and the proletariat and the communist. So let's go through these. There's a chapter for those um, bourgeoisie and proletarians. Uh, da, da, da. Page 95. Hmm. Was that incorrect? It was uh, incorrect. Bear with me, folks. It won't take long. There it is. The abolition existing of existing property relations is not all distinctive feature of communism. All property relations in the past have continued been subject to historical change and consequences and change in historical conditions. This is the French Revolution. Here we get to the important part. In the sense, the theory of communism may be summed up in a single sentence, abolition of private property. We communists have been reproached for the desire of abolishing the right to personal acquiring property by the fruit of a man's own labor, which property, which pur pur <coughs> pro pur <coughs> pur pur is alleged to be the groundwork for all personal freedom, activity, and independence. It is. Hard-won, hard self-acquired, self-earned property do not mean the property of the petty artisan and small peasant, a form of property that precedes bourgeoisie form, question mark. There is no need to develop that, to abolish that, development of industry has a great extent already destroyed it and still and is still destroying it daily so it will be destroyed or do you mean modern bourgeoisie private property does wage labor create any property and and labor question mark not a bit it creates capital the kind of property that exploits labor and cannot increase 
upon the condition of getting new supply and wage. Um, this goes down, 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 but that's not really the just of it. In a communist society, the present dominates the past. The bourgeoisie capital is independent and is individuality, while the living person is dependent and has no individuality. And abolition of the state of all things is called by the bourgeoisie abolition of individual property and freedom, and rightly so. Abolition of the bourgeoisie individuality, bourgeoisie independence, bourgeoisie freedom, undoubtedly aimed at. By freedom is meant under the present bourgeoisie conditions, the production of free trade, free selling and buying. But if selling and buying disappears, free selling and buying disappears also. We talk about free selling and free buying and all others and all other brave words of our bourgeoisie uh, freedom in general, having meaning that only in contrast restricted selling and buying with the fretted traders of the Middle Ages. It has been objected to upon abolition of private property, that all work will cease, and universal laziness will take us over. And they give no retort to that. Now here's the scariest thing. It comes on page 100. Abolition of the family, even the most radical flare-up and infamous proposal of communism. On what foundation is the present family, the bourgeoisie family, based on capital and on private gain? It is completely developed. This family exists only among the bourgeoisie, the state of things. Now you have to understand what bourgeoisie means. Bourgeoisie are the small business owners, are people who are trying to make a better life for themselves, who are trying to acquire land and property so that their children can have a better life. That's what the bourgeoisie is. It's not the, no, the very rich, noble people. It's not the peasants. Uh, but yeah, family is a... Uh, it's hated by communism because it's seen as the first beginnings of tribalism because you would side with your family before you'd side with anybody else. It's the way of the state. It is completely developed form of the family that exists among bourgeoisie, but this state of things is, is this state of things finds itself but things finds itself complete in practical absence of family among proletarians and in public prostitution. No, the proletarians did have families of their own and in fact some of the biggest uh, groups that fought against the communist revolution were the skilled workers, were the proletarians. Um, <laughs> the communists further approached the desire to abolish countries and nationality. I mean, this is why Marx hated the Africans, he hated the blacks, he hated the Jews, he hated the Mexicans, because he wanted a, a universal world that either spoke English or German and had identical culture and no human rights. 
National differences and antagonisms between people are daily more and more vanishing. Is used for globalism. Owing to the development of the bourgeoisie to freedom of commerce and world trade to unify the mode of production and conditions of life hitherto, the supremacy of the proletariat will cause them to vanish still faster. The United States is leading a United, United Action of the leading civilized countries, at least, is one the first conditions for emancipation of the proletariat. So all those indigenous cultures to be wiped out and put into factories. The charges against communism made by religious and philosophical and, and in general from the ideological standard point are not deserving of serious examination. because communism wants to abolish all eternal truths. The ideas of religious liberty and free freedom of conscience merely are an expression to sway of freedom of competition without any domain knowledge. Undoubtedly, it will be said, religious, moral, and philosophical and judicial ideas <clears throat> have been modified in the course of history and development, but religion, morality, philosophy, Political science, law, um, <clears throat> consistency survived and changed. There are, besides <clears throat> eternal truth and freedom, justice, etc., and in common, all states of society. But communism abolishes all eternal truths, it abolishes all religion, and abolishes all morality. Instead, constituting them as a new basis, and therefore, acts in contradiction to all past historical experiences. Should I go on? The most radical rapture with traditional ideas. Oh, wait a Nevertheless, advanced countries follow, follow the pretty general and ab, general and applicable one to implement communism. Abolish property in land and application of all rest, rents and land to public purpose. Two, heavily progressive graduated income tax. Three, abolition of all rights of inheritance. Four, Confiscation of property of all immigrants and rebels. Five, centralization of all credit in the hands of the state by means of the national bank and state capital and executive exclusive monopoly. Six, centralization of the means of communication, transportation in the hands of the state. Seven, extension of factories and instruments of production owned by the state, bringing cultivation and waste lands and improvement in soil generally occurring within a common plan. Eight, equal, equal liability in all labor establishment in industry armies, especially agricultural. Nine, the combination of agricultural manufacturing duties, gradual abolition of distinction between those town and country, more equitable and distribution of population over the country. 10. Free education for all children in all public schools. Abolition of child factories. Labor. <clears throat> combination of education and industrial production, etc. What a freaking nightmare. So unless you want to see your your uh, your tradition get destroyed and your culture get destroyed, then be a communist.